Ujje, you reign in majesty, mighty God. Everything written about you is great. Say you are great. Say you are great. Oh, everything written about you is great. Lord, you are great. Lord, you are great. Oh, everything written about you is great. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, O Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We give you all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We give you all the glory. Lord, you are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, my Lord. You are worthy to be Oh, <laughs> 
First time seeing some of you in the new year, so happy new year to those who are appearing the first time in the new year. This is the first Sunday service that we are having on site in 2021. So yeah, happy new year and welcome to the to church. Welcome to the gathering of the saints. Hallelujah. It is the will of the Father that we should gather. Anything working against the gathering of the saints is not of God. Anything working against the gathering of the saints is not of God. The will of the Father is that we should be together and worship together and fellowship together. Praise God. So, but thank God that the, the restriction is being relaxed. And uh, gradually, things will fully get back to normal. There is no disease in the church. Upon Mount Zion, there is deliverance and holiness. And the sons and daughters of Jacob shall possess their position. They that dwell upon this mountain shall not say, I am sick. Why is God saying that? Because there is no sickness upon Mount Zion. Hallelujah. The church is that Zion that, that the gathering, the place of the gathering of the innumerable number of angels is not a place of the gathering of virus. It's not a place of the gathering of sickness and disease. We do our best to keep to the regulations of the government. But if you know God and if you know who you are in Christ, you shouldn't leave in fear of any virus. You shouldn't live 
in fear of any sickness. You shouldn't live in fear of any disease. We are living above all of that. If they are attacking you successfully, there is something you don't understand. If diseases and viruses are attacking you successfully, there are certain revelations you need to open your heart to. And do as the Lord bids you. We are, we are born into a realm that is beyond sickness and disease. When the Bible says, they that do well on this mountain shall not say, I am sick. It is because there is no sickness on Mount Zion. This is the restoration of the Garden of Eden. Where God placed the original man, there was no sickness, there was no disease. We are God placed the original man. Why? And that was the reason there was no hospital, there was no doctor. They were living the supernatural life. They were living the life of God. And sickness had no place around them. Hallelujah. When we are born again into the kingdom of Christ, we are born into that life that Adam lost in the garden. There was restoration of eternal life. There was restoration of the spirit of God. There was restoration of the, the zoe of God. The life of God. Hallelujah. So we are living above the virus. I don't care how many people that decided to succumb to it. We are living above the virus. We are living above it. We are not subject to the attacks of any, any virus. Glory to God. So if you are coming to church, observe the regulations, put your mask, do the sanitizing. We did fumigation and the disinfection and the sanitization, everything that is required in this auditorium to obey the regulations of the land. But we know, we are persuaded, we are convinced that we are living above the virus. Hallelujah. It cannot kill you. When the Lord gives peace, nobody can make trouble for you. So you need to understand these things and live in that realm. Thank you, precious Lord. Hallelujah. So, welcome back to church. And uh, we thank God for those of you who are not who have not disappeared entirely out of fear that there is virus in the air. The virus that is not in, 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 in casino where they, do, where they go to do gambling. They got drunk. They do gambling. They hug each other. They do all manner of things in casino. But the virus is in church. How is it that virus is not in casino but is in church? We just need to have understanding of these things and take our destinies in our hands and war. The world is at war, but the weapon of our warfare is not carnal. The world is at war, but the weapon of our warfare is not carnal. Understand it. You don't know what the government of the world is going to develop tomorrow against the church, against the gathering. But you need to be rooted and have understanding that we are fighting a war. Glory to God. God has given you peace. Nobody can trouble your life. God has given us peace. No power can trouble us. So we are starting this month with the word that the Lord gave to us. It's a season of supernatural fruitfulness. Supernatural fruitfulness. In the second service, we will be, we will be taking some of the testimonies. God has been marvelous. All this period that the, the church does were short. The devil's intention. Actually, what the devil planned was that the church would be on lockdown till 15th of March. 
or April 15th. And within that period, there was, sub, there was going to be mass death. The fight that the devil is putting up is anything that will make the light not to be together. Because when the lights are together in fellowship, the brightness drives away every kind of darkness. Hallelujah. So, within this period that the church doors were closed and fellowship was prohibited, some people were carried away. They don't even join on the online service. And if you know the kind of war that we have fought, if God bless you with a shepherd, please appreciate your shepherd. Appreciate your pastor. Some of you go home that there is no church service. You sleep, you rest. We don't do that. Because we know that that lockdown is not for your good. It's not in your favor. We know that there is a sad news that devil wants to create around your life. This week alone, this week, just this week alone, we have faced three days death situations. When I receive the call, I will hear, Pastor, my daughter is dead. Pastor, my mother is dead. But by the mercies of God, all of those people that were concluded that they were dead, they will be in church today, alive. They are not dead eventually. See the way you are shouting amen. See the way you are, the way you are responding to that because you didn't suffer what we suffered. If you were exposed to hearing the children of a woman over the phone saying, Pastor, our mother is dead. Mommy is dead. Mommy, please now, mommy, open your eyes. Mommy, wake up. If you, if you face that, when we say they are going to be in church today, you will rejoice and give God praise. If a man called you in the middle of the night and said, Pastor, my daughter is dead. They, they drove from home. The daughter was lifeless. Got to Grutusque. We prayed for more than one hour. The daughter was without life. Suddenly, I had a voice when I was, when the devil was telling me, you will soon hear a major cry when they will conclude that there is nothing we will do. Suddenly, instead of hearing cry, I had pastor. He had, she has just risen. She has just woken up. She is awake now. And she just woke up as though nothing happened. If you had part to what we experienced, you will know how to give God thanks. Had the cry of children, Mommy, please wake up. Mommy, please don't do this. Mommy, please open your eyes for close to two hours. I was driving like a mad person, looking for road, praying over the phone because I need to keep the children engaged. They, they need to hear. The father locked his phone. He didn't know what was happening. The phone was inside the car and the car was in the panel beater. So they were calling him. They couldn't get hold of the man. If you saw the battles we faced, the devil's intention, oh dear Lord Jesus. If we are to face what the devil planned for us to face, in one week, we are facing two to three barriers in one week. And the people, one is a girl of 13 years. The other one is a mother of four children faithful followers of Christ in the house. And the thing is not pastor, my mother is sick or my daughter is sick. It's pastor, my daughter is dead. And you are praying, the devil is saying, didn't you hear what they say? That she is dead. Are you God? Have you not fasted? Did you not climb mountain? Will you kill yourself for these people? Go and rest now. Ah, you have finished what you can do. Just leave them. She's dead means that she's dead. I looked at Satan. I don't know what to tell him because he was seriously interrupting my prayer. I'll just turn around and say, Waka. I'll continue my prayers. I'll pray, pray. He will speak and speak at us and Gah! I'll continue my prayers. I'll just pray. Say, you are wasting your time. You will soon hear serious cry and you know, you will really know that the atmosphere is getting ready for cry. For more than, for close to two hours, 
the children were shaking their mother. Mom, mommy, open your eyes. Now you can't be imagining anything in your mind. No response. When eventually in the middle of the road as I was driving and I said to them, put the phone in her ears. They put the phone in her ears. I was invoking the covenant of life and I was praying. Suddenly I heard, I said, what's going on? The doctor said, daddy, we don't know. But hey, hey, yeah, the mouth is moving. The mouth is moving. She's trying to open her eyes. She's trying to open her eyes. I said, pour water on her. We are grateful to you, Father. We can't thank you enough. Say, our Lord Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name. As we were sharing the testimony of the girl on Thursday, the woman came in and joined us to share the testimony. Little did she know that her te own testimony is going to come, but the devil didn't plan it to be a testimony. And you remember I told you early in November that between November and March, the devil planned to steal people's lives, not with COVID-19, but that thing will be, people will just be dropping dead. People will just be dropping. Strangely, the two persons that this attack came to, the little girl of 13 years told me exactly the same thing that the mother of four told me. He said, a woman was shooking my heart. Now the person is in coma. So was seeing things. He said, the woman was shooking my heart and he was saying to me, give me your life. That's what the 13 year old said. She was saying to me, give me your life. Give me your life. And I, said, I intervened. I said, you can't give your life to anybody because Christ has given his life to us. For us. The woman said, I saw two people. One is a skeleton, another is a woman. And the skeleton was said, shook her heart. And she was saying, I cannot see her heart properly. Why will she see her heart? Her heart is hidden in Christ. And then he said, go from the back and shook her from the back and penetrate from the back. You will get the heart and she will die. As they were shooking from the heart, from the back, the skeleton was saying, come, come to us, come to us. And she was dying, taking a journey. If you don't think that this is God's mercy, count how many people between last year and this year that had that kind of experience and they never come back to life. Two hours, three hours, somebody was lifeless. Hey, Jesus, we give you praise. So Job chapter 34 verse, verse 29 is the one word that I want you to settle your heart on this morning as we teach a little on supernatural fruitfulness. And I pray for you. Job chapter 34 verse 29. If you have it on King James Version. King James Version. Job chapter 34 verse 29. Okay. Hallelujah. The scripture says, verse 29 of Job chapter 34. When he giveth quietness, who then can make trouble? That's the part that I want to pick up. When God has given you quietness, no power, no body, no man, no woman can make trouble for you successfully. There are troublemakers all over the world going around making trouble on people's health, making trouble in people's marriages, making trouble in people's businesses, making, people, making trouble in people's finances. But thus says the Lord, I have given you quietness and no power can make trouble for you no man can successfully make trouble for you because i the lord i have given you quietness 
in this season of the troubles of the world the quietness of the Lord will protect and preserve your life in the name of Jesus I have given you quietness no power can make troubles for you no matter where they came from whoever or wherever it originated whoever sent them God says the word of the Lord I have given you peace I have given you peace and no man no woman no power can make troubles against you and succeed in the name of Jesus no sickness can make trouble against you and succeed in the name of Jesus no no court can make trouble against you and succeed in the name of Jesus. No man, no woman, no power, no spirit. Jehovah has given you peace. Jehovah has given us peace. There is peace in your body. No sickness can trouble you. There is peace in your family. No sickness can trouble you. There is peace in your marriage. No trouble can get you down in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. When Jehovah gives peace, nothing can trouble you. Lift up your hands and say, I have the peace of God. Nothing will trouble my life. I have the peace of God. Nothing will trouble my life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I have said it repeatedly that the world is at war. But the weapon of our warfare is not canal. Amen. So please, every time you come to church within this period, it is not business as usual. Are you hearing me? These people that the devil came to steal, the plan of the devil is that Pastor Bonnie and the church will not find face to raise to say thank you Jesus by this today that we are sitting. But God passed them. God is stronger than them. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know who else they are planning, they are targeting to steal. But none will be missing in this family. None will be missing in this family. In the mighty name of Jesus. He said to me, can't you rest? Will you kill yourself? I've done all manner of fasting. Even when you are climbing mountain, did they join you? You have tried your own. If the person is going to die, let them die. You know the devil can nag more than women. He was nagging and nagging and quarreling and quarreling. I can't even hear myself. I thought I said, waka. I continue my prayer. I don't know when last I said waka, but Satan provoked me to the point that I turned around and said, gawa. I just prayed my prayer. He, he, he made me to feel that there is no point praying. This girl is dead. You have been shouting for how many minutes now? She's dead. And a day before that thing happened, a pastor friend called me and said, my daughter who came to church and worshipped with us, a very vibrant fellow in church, was just about, just that I was, I told the husband I'm feeling pain at the back. In the morning, the story came up. And the husband said, okay, let's wait when the, 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 the pharmacies open up so that I can go and buy you medication. And it's about 8 o'clock in the morning. She, he went out to buy medica medication. The woman calls him back and says, please come back, come back, come back. He comes back and he says, uh, please don't leave me. I am afraid. I feel some fear. Stay close to me. As he came close to sit down, the woman died. Last week. The man, the pastor said, I prayed and prayed and prayed for about two, three hours until the police and ambulance forced me out of the house. Is it that we are more righteous than those who died? What do we do? What do we have? What do we give? Is it not just mercy? So in the face, after I finished hearing that story, the following morning, the following night, a member calls me, my daughter is dead. I said, what are you talking about? He said, my daughter passed out. 
Where are you now? We drove from home to the, the, the hospital. She was still lifeless, dead, that was wheeled into the, 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 the hospital. I don't know what is going on now. Once I had that, I stopped listening to his story. I held his phone over and we started worrying. The devil kept reminding me, the person that prayed prayer was yesterday, what happened? Stop wasting your time. But God showed us mercy. Hallelujah. It's not of our righteousness. It's not of anything that we could offer or afford. It's mercy. It's mercy. Hallelujah. To get out from that one, two days ago, driving to pick my daughter up, another call, pastor, my daughter has passed out. I wheeled the car around where I was going. Forgot my daughter and was heading to the place. I was praying over the phone. I was heading to the place. I was and we, I said, where is your place? He said, 13th Avenue. Do you know, I passed 14th Avenue and 12th Avenue more than five times. I couldn't see 13th Avenue because my head was so full. What is the devil trying to do? I would drive past 13th Avenue, get to 12th, back to 14th, back to 12th. Back, I, where is the 13th now? Finally, I got to 13. God in his mercy came down again and changed the story. When this happened, I said, you, your daughter, your husband, enter into my car. I don't want to leave you people behind. Let me see that devil that will come and kill your daughter inside my car. And everywhere I was going throughout the day, I was driving about with them. Praise God. Got down from that one. Yesterday, we came down from the mountain. I was tired. I'd lay down to rest before I, I got out. I had my wife shouting, Talita Kumi, Talita Kumi, because that was the prayer she had me praying when the daughter was in the hospital. Talita Kumi, I said, Talita again. Which will Talita this time now? I said, Talita Kumi, Talita Kumi. She prayed and prayed and came into the room. And the children, she said, put the phone on loudspeaker, pour her water, Talita Kumi. The children were saying, Mama is not getting up. Oh. Mama, she's not opening her eyes. Mama, this. I said, give me the phone. I took the phone. And another battle continued. As I was put, I just took, bent, put on, carry my shirt, Sam opened the door. I was shouting, you cannot die. I jumped up, the people in the compound were, I didn't care, run into my car, zoom. I was driving, I was praying, I was driving, I was praying. We drove for about 35 minutes or thereabout as I was, I, I was praying and getting there. They said, Papa, she's trying to open her eyes. I said, pour water. Do you know strangely, before the daughter called my wife, the mother fainted and was struggling. The girl carried water and was pouring into her mouth. When you see somebody between life and death, the easiest way to kill the person is to give the person water to drink. The devil so planned it that the husband was not at home. It was left with children. And the woman said to the daughter, bring me water. She went out to bring water and came back and saw the mother on the floor. So she believed that since water is what she needed, let me pour the water into her. But she has so much past that her mouth could not open to receive the water. God in his mercy. Long story short, we still shouted glory, hallelujah, at the end of the day with that woman, and she is still here. We didn't lose anybody. We will not lose you. We will not lose any member of your family. We will not lose any member of your family. We will not lose any member of Christ world. In the mighty name of Jesus. Sinatra sang a song. No one knows like I do what but you've done, done for me. me. And it's why I praise you the way I do. So the reason I praise the way I do and you are looking at me the way you do is because you don't know what he did for me. And the people said when they carry the corpse of another man's daughter it's like a firewood. 
is the man whose daughter they are carrying his corpse that knows what happened. No one knows like I do what you've done for me. So I praise you the way I do. <laughs> no one knows like I do what you've done for me. That's why I praise you the way I do. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. You praise him based on what you know. Those who don't know what he did for you, don't let them stop you from praising him the way you do. Hallelujah. Amen. So, God's plan for us in February 2021 is not burial. It's not sorrow. It's not mourning. And it doesn't matter whoever plans any other thing. The only will of the Father that, is, that will be done in our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, verse 26 to 28. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to 28. That is the word the Lord gave to us. Supernatural fruitfulness. Supernatural fruitfulness. Hallelujah. And God said, come, let us create man in our image and after our likeness. That they will have dominion over the earth. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air. And over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God. God created his, created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion. Hallelujah. From the beginning of creation, God's plan was not that you will be fruitful through personal struggle. From the beginning of creation, God created us to be fruitful. To be fruitful means to be productive. To produce, to make profit in life. To produce in different areas of your life. And the will and the purpose of the Father is that through your fruitfulness, you will have dominion and rule in your world. But the Father did not command us to have dominion by our own strength. He did not command us to have dominion by personal struggles. He did not command us to have dominion by suffering and being tormented by the devil. The commandment to have dominion is going to depend on your ability to bear fruit. And your ability to bear fruit is not originally dependent on your personal struggle and suffering. He gives supernatural enablement that empowers you to be a fruit. And by this supernatural enablement, he then commands you, be fruitful. Notice that he made it clear, he, my purpose of creating man is that he will have dominion on earth over every other creature. So he created them in his likeness, the likeness of dominion, the likeness of power, the likeness of glory. Hallelujah. And then in verse 28, he blessed them. And as he blessed them, he now said to them, be fruitful. How are they going to be fruitful? By the power of the blessing. By the power of the blessing, they were energized to bear fruit. They were energized to bring forth. 
because the Lord has blessed them. So God is not planning that in 2021 you are going to suffer and struggle and fight with demons of your family and you try this way, they will block you. You will try the other way, they will block you. God's plan is not that you will be fighting with witches and wizards who don't want you to make progress, who don't want you to experience anything good in your life. No, God's plan in your life is that you are empowered and commanded to bear fruit. So this year, you are not going to face the matter of fruitfulness by your weakness and by, and, and by the attacks of the forces of darkness. In 2021, there is a supernatural infusion. There is a supernatural empowerment. There is a supernatural impartation. There is a supernatural enablement that God has released upon your life that will never that will enable you to bear fruit where you have never borne fruit before in your life. In 2021, God, his intention is that you will reign with Christ. But listen, there is no reigning without fruit. That's why to reign is to have dominion, to rule in your sphere of environment, your, your sphere of, of, of business, your sphere of authority, your sphere of control. Wherever you are facing, wherever you are doing, God's intention is that you will rule in that area. You will dominate in your community. You will dominate in your place of business. You will dominate in your village. You will dominate in your city. You will be the one reigning and ruling with Christ. That is the will and the mandate of the father that you cannot reign you cannot rule if your life is not productive what gives you the power to rule and to reign is productivity when we talk about productivity people who are called barren in 2021 the blessing of bearing fruit is upon you the blessing of bearing fruit is upon you every yoke of barrenness is broken every barrier to your fruitfulness is broken every yoke of barrenness is broken every yoke of barrenness is broken every yoke of barrenness is broken, is broken. in the mighty name of Jesus Jesus. There are people who are biologically barren. They cannot produce children. When the blessings, the Bible says, the blessing of the Lord make it rich. How? Because it empowers you to be fruitful. And when you produce, you are, when you are going to business every day and your business is producing profit, for instance, today you, prof, you produce profit, tomorrow you produce profit, you will be able to go back with your capital plus additional money to buy something more than what you bought last month. Is that correct? Then when you brought it back, you are making more profit. The profit will be added to the capital you had before. And you will buy more than you bought before. And then you will make more profit. And you will add to what you had before. So if you started with 2,000, it can become 4,000. It can become 20,000. And when the money is, in, the capital is increasing by the reason of constant productivity and profit, you may even decide to diversify what you are doing. That's what God meant when he said, be fruitful and multiply. So, when what you are doing is bringing fruit, you cannot stay in one shop. You cannot stay in one church. Christ's world ministries has a mandate to multiply in 2021. Hallelujah. Your business can expand. You can go beyond the little place where you have been in the past three years or the past 13 years. The will of the Father is that you will bear fruit. Every day in your life will be an addition. Every day in your life will bring something new. Every day in your life will bring more profit. And when profit is added upon profit, that is multiplication. And then you will expand. When you begin to expand, you will begin to have dominion. Hallelujah. 
If you are married, God's intention is that you will produce children. You cannot multiply in your marriage if it is only you and your wife or you and your husband. If you have been experiencing miscarriages, if you have been experiencing abortion, or you have someone connected to you that has been married and is barren or is experiencing miscarriages and abortion and there is no multiplication in their family, hear the word of God today. The anointing for destroying barrenness is upon that family. As long as you are here representing that family, the anointing for destroying barrenness and delay is upon that family. Barrenness is broken. Barrenness is broken. Barrenness in business is broken. Kai, that barren business shall produce this year. Shall be fruitful 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 this year. In the name of Jesus. How do I know that your business will be fruitful this year? Because there is supernatural empowerment upon you. Adam could not bear fruit without supernatural empowerment. Neither will you. If you have been doing one business and there is no expansion for 10 years, for 7 years, something is wrong. And whatever is it that was wrong, that was keeping your life from not making progress in your career, you are in one place, there is no promotion in your business, it has not been making in your marriage by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. The yoke of barrenness is broken. The yoke of barrenness is broken. The yoke of barrenness is broken. Supernaturally, you will do what you could not do in the past 10 years. Supernaturally, you will produce in 2021 what you could not produce in the past 10 years. Hallelujah. I need everyone listening to me here this morning to understand that the power of God is resting upon you. To do what you have never done before in your life. You will produce what nobody had ever produced in your family before. You will produce what nobody had ever been able to produce in your community before. By the power of the Holy Ghost upon you, you will do the unbelievable. You will do the unbelievable. You will do the unbelievable. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let me show you what, 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 what supernatural fruitfulness looks like. Jeremiah chapter 33. Jeremiah chapter 33. Verse 6 to 9. The Bible said, Behold, I will bring in it health and healing. Please hear this. God says, I, the Lord, will bring. So there is something that is coming from outside your ability, from outside your efforts that is coming upon you this year. Something is dropping from heaven upon your life this year that will make the impossible possible. That will make the impossible. He said, I, the Lord, will bring it. Just hold on a moment before we come back to that Jeremiah. Come with me again to come with me to Genesis chapter 17. Genesis chapter 17. I will come back to this Jeremiah. Verse 1. God said, God said, God said, when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am Almighty God. Hey. God is introducing himself to you this morning. He's saying the extent to which you will prosper in 2021 is not going to depend on your ability. It's not going to depend on your weakness. It's not going to depend on who is fighting you and who is for you and who is against you. He said, I am the all-powerful God. I am with you. I am standing with you this year to do the impossible through your life. 
I am the almighty God. Then he said to Abraham, walk before me and be blameless. The secret to supernatural fruitfulness is blamelessness. The secret to supernatural fruitfulness is righteousness. Your life will attract the presence of God when you learn how to practically live the life of righteousness. Your life will attract favor. Your life will attract God's glory when you learn how to live righteously, practically. Men will neglect you. They may think that you don't belong. They may think that you were fool by the way you are living. But God says, walk before me and be blameless. Walk before me and be righteous. Walk before me and do what is right. See what is going to follow. Come, Alanda, by your heart, Isaiah. This one said, be perfect. Now give me verse 2. Give me verse 2. And I will make my covenant between me and you. And I will multiply you exceedingly. Kudu Magida Bayakada. Papa says, when you walk in righteousness, your prosperity becomes my business. Your prosperity is no longer going to depend on your effort. It's no longer going to be determined by the enemies who are attacking you, who don't want you to prosper. I will now take it upon myself to multiply you. Hear me, child of God. That business that never multiplies, that thing you are doing that has remained stagnant, Jehovah is stepping into the situation in his power. He said, I am the all Almighty God, this year, the all powerful God will powerfully move you forward. The Almighty God will mightily expand your life in the mighty name of Jesus. When he said, I am the Almighty, he said, the, 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 the Hebrew word the Almighty is talking about is, is the all breasted God. Watch this. Is actually the feminine dimension of God. Watch it. It's the feminine. God is not a human. It's not like men or female. But the word that was used there, I am the almighty, is the, is the feminine dimension of God. Why? Because God was about to talk about fruitfulness and multiplication. Fruitfulness and multiplication has something to do with womb. Both spiritual womb and physical womb. I am the all-breasted. I have breasts to lose your success, to breastfeed your prosperity, to, breast, to breastfeed your success. I am the all-breasted God. I have breasts in every angle and area of my life. Hayeku tasi borigada. And by my power. I will. Make you. Exceedingly. Exceedingly. Excessively. Beyond measure. Please. Please. If you made progress in the previous years by your trying, how much more will it be now that God is saying, I myself, I am stepping in to make you exceedingly fruitful. Hallelujah. I will multiply your life. I will multiply your business. I will multiply the works of your hand. I will multiply peace for you. I will multiply your health. I will multiply your prosperity. When he said that, Abraham fell first ground. You know, he says, I will make my covenant with you. When the man called me and said, Pastor, my daughter is dead. My, my daughter passed out now. 
After that story, I raised my hand. I said, Father, in 2021, what we have with you is a covenant of life, not covenant of death. I bring the covenant of life over that daughter. Even if they said he is dead, she is dead. The word of God says, on that day, even the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God. And they that hear will live. The word of God says, those that are in Christ, we are passed from death unto life. My daughter cannot lie dead. Why? The covenant of life is upon our life. I held on to the covenant of life until the father said, Papa, she is awake. That is the only thing I want to hear. Every other thing the devil was saying does not tally with the covenant of life. You see, every other thing may fail in life, but the force of covenant is something you need to carefully hold on to. In Genesis 26, don't go to that. Genesis 26, the Bible said there was famine in the land. Everybody was running. Isaac got up to run. God appeared and said, I am the God who made covenant with your father. By the reason of the covenant I have with your father, you will prosper in this land. Don't run away. Everything else can fa fail. But when you know the value and the place of covenant, there are some of you that are covenant partners of Christ's world ministry. You don't understand the difference between you and other people who are doing the same business with you. When things are shaking, go back to the altar of your covenant. Hallelujah. Say to God, I am a covenant partner with your work. What is destroying others cannot destroy me. What is stopping others can I don't care. A thousand may fall on your left hand. Ten thousand on your right hand side, but it will not come near you. Why? There is a covenant of life over your life. I said to God, let the covenant of life speak for that daughter. Hallelujah. So if you are a covenant partner working with the kingdom of God, be careful. Understand that your life is not an ordinary life. Your business is not an ordinary business. Others can do whatever they want to do. Be careful to remember the covenant that keeps you going. Be careful to remember the covenant that distinguishes you from others. The covenant that makes you different from everyone else. Hold on to it. Every other shaking may shake. Every other thing may collapse. But as long as you are holding on to the covenant, what swallowed others cannot swallow you. God appeared to Isaac. He said, don't run because others are running. Isaac said, but there is famine in the land. No business is working here anymore. He said, your own will work because of covenant. Hallelujah. This year, you are going into your business, into your marriage, into your life, into the new year with the covenant of supernatural fruitfulness. The covenant of supernatural fruitfulness will work for you. The covenant of supernatural fruitfulness will work for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. When others are shouting there is drying up, you will shout, I am multiplying. I am multiplying. I am expanding. I am going forward. In the mighty name of Jesus. Why? I am carrying the covenant covenant of supernatural fruitfulness. When others are being fired, you will be promoted. Why? The covenant of supernatural fruitfulness is working on you. He said to Abraham, I will multiply you exceedingly. Get to verse 3. Keluba kalaba shayadaba sento then Abraham fell first ground verse 4 as for me behold my covenant is with you wherever you go this year the covenant of supernatural fruitfulness is going with you the covenant of supernatural fruitfulness is going with you your fame will spread abroad in your place of business Promotion will be your name. 
you will be accepted in the high places. There are open doors for you in the government. There are open doors for you in the parliament. There are open doors for you in the high places of the earth. The government of supernatural multiplication will lift you higher. In the mighty name of Jesus, lift up your voice and say, I am bearing fruit supernaturally. Because this year they will ask you, how are you making it? How are you succeeding? Your answer will be, I am bearing fruit supernaturally. Raise your voice and declare that as you lift up your hand. I am bearing fruit supernaturally. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet, everyone. Likata marando robo sheklete bigalabahaya. Lebro kondo zimba la katenda morika yaba. Say, this is my year of reigning with Christ. I cannot be hidden. I will reign in multiplication, in fruitfulness. Whatever I do shall produce. Whatever I do shall be fruitful. Supernaturally, I shall be fruitful. Supernaturally, I will bear fruit. Supernaturally, I will produce. Supernaturally, I will multiply. Supernaturally, I will multiply. Supernaturally. Now, I need you to focus that prayer on multiplication. Papa said, I will multiply you exceedingly. What that means is that if you have one car, and maybe you are in, in, into car business, you will have more than one this year. One plus one plus one, is it one? One times ten is multiplication. Is it one? One times ten, what is it? As long as you have one, once there is multiplication, there will be upgrade. One times three is what? Three. Papa said, I will multiply you exceedingly. If you have one business place, the covenant of God over your life this month is that there is a supernatural power coming upon you that your shop will multiply, your effect will multiply, your business will multiply. The only thing that will not multiply is your husband or your wife. Because in marriage, one plus one is one. The two has become one. So even if one plus two times two in marriage is two, your children will multiply if you want. Amen. Your grandchildren will multiply. But your wife can never multiply. Your husband can never multiply. You see, when God came to Abraham in chapter 17 and said, walk before me and be perfect. You know the reason he said that? Abraham did wife multiplication. God said, I have now come to multiply you in my own way. Don't try to multiply what is not meant to be multiplied. Because it will swallow the ones that are meant to multiply. One wife, one husband, every other thing around you will multiply this year. Amen. Lift up your two hands up to heaven. Say, by the covenant of Jehovah. In 2021, every good thing around my life shall multiply. I receive the power for multiplication. I receive the anointing for multiplication. I receive the anointing for multiplication. I receive the unction for multiplication. My business will multiply. My family will multiply. My, my, my destiny will multiply. My money will multiply. My money will multiply. My connections will multiply. My open doors will multiply. Favor will multiply in my life. As I begin to pray, I prophesy, I declare supernatural multiplication, supernatural fruitfulness, supernatural fruitfulness. Everything I am doing is multiplying, is multiplying, is multiplying. My houses are multiplying in the city of Cape Town. My houses are multiplying in the city of Cape Town. Lift up your voice and pray. Ekelu Gadali Bagadoya. Ekelu. Ekelu Bagadali Gadali 
que te que polla, es que lupa catalique te que polla, es que lupa catalique te que polla, es que lupa catalique te que polla. I receive the anointing for multiplication. I receive the unction for multiplication. I receive the unction for multiplication. Shadi bahata limo sakayata. Zibra lanto seki domolinda kabahaya. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Verse 5, he said to him, No longer shall your name be called Abraham, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you, Kai, it is God that will make you prosperous this year. It is God. You must learn to depend completely on him. And by the reason of what God is bringing upon us, some of you, your names are changing. Your names is being upgraded. Your names are 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 being upgraded. Being upgraded. In the mighty name of Jesus. I am changing your name. It says your name will no longer be Abraham. You will no longer be known as the one with one business place that does not expand. You will now be known as the multiplying deacon, as the multiplying brother, as the expanding brother, as the expanding sister. In the mighty name of Jesus. Anything that is barren in your life, receive the anointing to produce. Receive the anointing to be a fruit. Receive the anointing to multiply. Receive the anointing for expansion. In the name of Jesus, lift up your hands and say, I have the covenant of supernatural fruitfulness. In 2021, I receive profit on every angle, profit on every angle, fruitfulness in every area, fruitfulness in every area, profit on every angle, multiplication, multiplication in the name of Jesus. Now lift your voice and command anything that has been stagnant in your life, command them to multiply. My house multiply, my cars multiply, my children multiply, 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 anything that has been barren in my life. Life. Hear now the word of God. Multiply, 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 multiply. Kakayada, lift up your voice, pray. Multiply. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. The sixth, the Lord says, I will make you exceedingly fruitful. Hiya. Know it that in 2021, it is the Lord that will do it for you. Yesterday, when the Lord in his mercy brought my daughter back to life, I looked at the husband and I said, if we are the ones that are holding God, what would have happened to this woman when her hands were not alive to hold anything again? The children were shouting, Mama, please wake up. Mama, please open your eyes. Mama, please don't leave us. Jesus. As I came in and looked around the house, I can't imagine how the devil is so wicked that he wants to take this woman with all these small, small children crying around her. What a Satan that Satan is. But we hold not the rock. 
But the rock holds me. The rock holds me. The rock holds me. I hold no the rock. Be the rock holds me. I'm standing on the rock of God. When the husband eventually ran into the house when we have done prayers and the wife has revived, he was shouting, where, where would I have started? Where, 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 where would I have started? What, what? I understood that question. Where would I have started? Is it to marry another wife? To be the mother of who among these children that are scattered in this house? Satan is a Satan. Satan is simply a wicked Satan. But God is a good God. We are not, the, this year it is not by your power. That is why the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. Remember therefore the Lord your God. For it is he that gives you power to make wealth. How do you remember the Lord? When God blesses you. Don't just begin to plan what to do with the blessing without thinking about how to support the work of God. Your tithes and your offering are your primary means of supporting the work of God. God does not throw money inside the church. God sponsors the church through his people. God blesses the church by blessing his people. And if God is blessing you, and then he is blessing you so that you can be a blessing to his work. When the blessing comes and you forget the God who blesses you and start planning your thing and start working on your project, before two days that blessing has finished, you come back again and say, God, please bless me. Some, some blessing comes, you forget God again and so it's not like that. God is watching you. One day he will want to teach you that he's the one blessing you. If you cannot learn it by personal principle that God is the one blessing you and he is blessing you so that you can be a blessing to his work. If you can learn it by personal principle, if you cannot learn it by personal principle, he will teach you for three months of dryness that it is not your power that is blessing you. Hallelujah. He said, remember he said to Abraham, I will uphold my covenant with you. The one that the father said to me, my, mother, my daughter is dead. The thing that I used to come back to them is, Father, your covenant with us this year is the covenant of life, not of death. I can hear the cry of the mother on the background. The father said to me, Pastor, I am too confused. I don't even know what I'm saying. I don't know what is going on. But the covenant of life, please hear me. If you are depending on God for your fruitfulness and prosperity this year, don't forget the covenant side of it. Don't, don't forget your own side of the covenant. Whatever happened, don't forget your own part of the covenant. If God gives you five rand, every fruit has a seed. Without the seed that comes from today's fruit, there is no harvest for tomorrow. Are you hearing me? The fruit is at the mercy of the seed. Open apple, you will see as much as big as apple is, there is a small seed inside it. Every blessing of harvest that God gives to you, look for the seed side of it. Don't eat both the harvest and the seed. Don't eat both the fruit and the seed. Every fruit has a seed. Open mango tree. When you are eating mango, do you eat both the, 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 the fruit and the, the seed inside it? Even apple, do you eat both the seed and the, the, the fruit inside it? No, no, people of God, please. It is a year of supernatural fruitfulness. When the fruit comes, don't eat the seed. When the fruit comes, don't eat the seed. When you eat the seed, you are harming yourself. You are destroying the harvest of your tomorrow. How many of you ushers who opened this door has ever opened the door one day and, and see a pile of money by the door? It doesn't happen like that. 
How are we able to constantly open the door? Because some people made a commitment. Every fruit you give to me, Father, I will return the seed back to you. I will replant seed for another harvest. Hallelujah. God said to me, concerning you, please believe it. In Isaiah chapter 33 verse 9. He said, I will bring a dimension of blessing upon my people this year. That the nations that will see your blessing will fear God. Amen. Believe what I'm saying. Every small thing you are doing this year has the oil of multiplication upon it. Has the anointing of multiplication upon it. Has the grace of multiplication. But please, don't forget the Lord. Don't forget the Lord. Don't forget the Lord. There is nothing you are doing more than others. It is mercy and favor that is making you progressive. That's what my father taught me. Hallelujah. So when this God blesses you, remember the Lord in your offerings, in your partnership, in your covenant support of the church, whether through tight 1 over 10 or 10 over 10 or 20 over 10, whatever percentage that you consider as the seed for tomorrow's harvest, don't eat the harvest and eat the seed. Lift up your hands up to heaven. I come with you this morning. I come to you this morning with the supernatural deposit for your multiplication. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I speak over your life. I speak over your destiny. I speak over your business. I speak over the door Jehovah is opening for you. Receive supernatural fruitfulness. Receive supernatural multiplication. Receive supernatural multiplication. Receive supernatural multiplication in the name of Jesus. Listen, God does not curse anybody. In this generation, if you're a Christian, God cannot curse you. But it is the covenant practices that protects your, your harvest. That's why he says, I will rebuke devourers. So it is not God that is going to come to devour you. But when you begin to slack back from connecting to the altar of your covenant, you open your life to the attack of devourers. Devourers may come in form of police case. Devourers may come in form of sickness. Devourers may come in form of gathering and scattering. You are making the money, but you don't know where it's going. Devourers can come anywhere. It is not God that will destroy anybody. But the devourers have access when you are when you begin to play loose with your covenant practices. We are more spiritual than physical. As the blessing begins to manifest in the physical, don't forget your spiritual foundation. Lift up your hand again. I bless you with multiplication this year. I bless you with multiplication this year. I bless you with multiplication this year. Every work of your hand shall multiply. The work of your hand shall be fruitful. The work of your hand shall be fruitful. Your business will multiply. In your marriage, there is multiplication. In your marriage, you shall be fruitful. In your marriage, Marriage, you shall be fruitful, and your fruit will multiply. 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 In the name of Jesus, peace will multiply for you. 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 Anything attacking you with troubles. And taking peace away from you by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. It is broken. It is broken. It is broken. It is broken. It is destroyed. It is destroyed. It is destroyed. There shall be multiplied peace in your life. This year you will know peace and you will know prosperity. Thank you, Abba Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name. We have prayed. Hallelujah. This year, this decade, I told you, 
it is the decade of fierce wars, dangerous wars, and victory. And please, I told you in November last year that between November, December, January, February, and March, there is going to be the spirit of death hovering. Be alert and be prayerful. Anywhere you see the sense gathering, get involved and be active. You cannot do it alone. There is war. Hallelujah. If you faced what I faced this past week, nobody will tell you to wake up. You see, I was in Cameroon in 2007, 2006. One of my missionary team members that came with me died. The only son of his mother. I, came, I went a week before. He came with the other pastor a week after. He came this night and died the following morning as he was taking bath in the bedroom. Electric shocked him. The pastor who was our leader said to others, go to church. It was a Sunday morning. Let me and Pastor Bonnie keep praying. We have all prayed for about three hours. The boy didn't come back. We know this is the only son of the mother. What do we tell the widow? That your only son went for missionary trip for the first day and died. After three hours, the rest went. I was there with the pastor that was our leader. And for six hours, we prayed. The boy didn't come back. If you have ever experienced asking a dead body to come back to life and they refuse to come back, you will not want to die carelessly. Are you hearing me? You will not want to even travel to death to talk more of coming back. So, when I was praying for these two people that dropped and the people told me they are dead this past week, the devil was reminding me, the one you prayed in Cameroon, what happened? Stop troubling yourself. These people are dead. Leave them. Will you kill yourself for church people? Fasting. You fast. Prayer. You fast. Every mountain in Cape Town you have climbed. If they want to die, let them die now. And you have prayed. The way you prayed in Cameroon, he didn't rise. Leave this woman. She is dead. I turned to the devil. The first time I say waka with one hand. The second time I open my two hands and say waka. Father in the name of Jesus. And God still heard our prayers. The two of them came back to life. Praise the Lord. You heard me two days ago or three or four saying, it is better to fight for life when you still have the strength of life in you. The day sickness takes you, the day sickness takes you to the hospital bed, all your prayer, warrior, knowledge, and strength will disappear. You won't be able to pray for yourself again. Please pray when you can. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you have an offering, if you have a tithe, if you have a seed, if you have a partnership, Take it up now. Let's bless the Lord as we go and the second service will start immediately. Your tithe, your offering. If you have your tithe, you want to give your tithe or partnership of any kind, you can come forward. Let's pray with you. Take your offering, lift it up. Lift your offering up and those who want to give their tithe and partnership should please come forward. Let's pray with you. That is your way of moving the work of God forward. Ah. Ebo Bukam soro we nya walese ah alese ebenda na gairi God called you and He is prospering you so that you can join in prospering the kingdom. Don't deny God His portion this year. Your prosperity is the prosperity of the church. God bless you too much this year so that the church will enjoy the blessing. Please, please, don't hold everything that comes into your hand. There is a portion that belongs to God. If it is one cent, look for the portion that belongs to God. That is the only way the church can move forward. What you are giving to God is the, the bank you are building in heaven. Everything we have on this earth will pass away. 
I was with this brother Cletus the day we received the news of a, a man that died. I remember the question he asked. He said, son, So this life is nothing. Brother, it is true. The life is nothing. The billions you are putting up, the only one that matters is the one you invest into the preaching of the gospel. The rest that is dumped in your bank account and all the houses you built across the world, the day you are gone from here, when you close your eyes in time and wake up in eternity, you will discover that you are bankrupt in eternity. You have nothing you have stored in eternity. And you will not be in time forever. That's the point. He asked that day, so what is the need for all this pursuit of money and wealth? It is vanity when it is not connected for the preaching of the gospel. God is prospering you to prosper the work of God. I prophesy over every one of you. This is your year of supernatural multiplication. Whatever brought this tithe, whatever brought this partnership, it shall multiply this month. It shall multiply this year. It shall multiply this year. It shall multiply this month. It shall multiply. It shall multiply. It shall multiply. Ikabanda sokulu pakaraya. What you are doing shall multiply. Thank you, Father. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed amen and amen the lord bless you and multiply you the lord multiply you the lord multiply you the name of jesus this is your partnership for this particular business i pray that in between now and the first three months of 2021 this business will experience multiplication 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 expansion multiplication expansion whatever that needs to be resolved around it will be quickly in the face of resolving there is expansion in the midst of resolving there is multiplication in the mighty name of jesus thank you father in jesus christ's name we have prayed Amen. I bless your offering. I bless your gifts. I bless your seeds. Whatever you are raising before the Lord. Today, I prophesy it will multiply. 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 In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Give your offering and enjoy multiplication this week. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. Give your offering as we bless you. Every of your going out and your coming in this week is blessed. And every little thing you are doing, you will see multiplication in it. Please let this word that I'm speaking stay in your 